Yo, how's it going, everybody? Um, that's that PlayStation in the background. I just have a small thing. I think in dating is so much miscommunication. Um, so much. I don't want to say misinformation, but there's a whole lot of like things that are said and there are things that are implied and things that are unsaid. You know, it's roughly the same thing. So I just I guess that's some I want to say just based off like observations, like some failures on my part, um, some statements uh, that I've heard. Um, it's just it's a whole lot of misinformation and there's a whole lot of bias, too, um, and a whole lot of um, sort of he should he says she said type stuff. And that's, I just want to try to clear the air because I, I, I don't think dating needs to be hard. I think people should really speak their mind about stuff. I think uh, we need to know a lot about ourselves and, and try to heal from like our pain, our past traumas, our, our, our issues before we decide to enter dating. That way you enter dating and you're, you're not expecting this person to, to fix you, solve you. Uh, you're just there and you say, this is who I am. And you, you like that. And if they do like that, then they'll ride with you. And if they don't, then they won't ride with you. Another thing I do want to say is, uh, even for myself, this is something I'm, I'm, I am, I have learned and I'm currently applying is to know uh, how to not take rejection so personally. If people don't, can't vibe with you, can't be well with you like that, it's okay. And it's okay to, to acknowledge that you might find somebody different. You know, you might find somebody who's more your style, more your comfort. Another thing I do want to say is in terms of like masculinity and, and femininity and stuff like that. I think I don't really like this, this whole black and white issue of uh, masculinity and femininity. Uh, I talked to a therapist uh, maybe like a week ago or two weeks ago, and they mentioned that um, uh, that these these instances of uh sex gender expression they're pretty they're not relative but they're on a spectrum so you may say like the uh a super masculine guy is uh what people want and in my opinion um uh it's a popular narrative and if you put on a reverse side a very feminine woman is a popular narrative too and and in our culture they continue to be expressed uh, and they change by the the growing trends and stuff like that um it's my opinion that <clears throat> that people might have both aspects to them. And it's almost like introversion and extroversion. Um, there are people who are introverts, but to the right people, they're extroverted. And they are extra extroverts. I think extroversion is just extroverts all around. But um, I think it would be good for both sides to learn things from each other. Um, and in the same sense of um, the sexes, it's good for them to be... Uh, to learn things from from both sexes. Now, there's some things that men may never know from women and women may never know from men. And I know people want to have this whole bias thing that you can never learn something. There's some things you can never learn from women. There's some things you can never learn from men. And, uh, or if you're a man speaking about women's issues, then that's a problem. And if you're a man speaking of, and if you're a woman speaking about man issues, then that's a problem. But the thing is, I think we all just trying to make things easier for us, for ourselves because we say there's no handbook for this and that and the third. But there is that we've, we've done the, these dating things or things like parenting for a long time. So there's things that you can learn. It's one good reason as to why when you get parents and they teach you about stuff, you can you can actually apply that to your current situation. There pe There's somebody once told me from this uh Legacy Conference is a Christian conference. This this was like 2014, 15. When they mentioned, they say, if you want to know the future, talk to an older person. And that's just because there's really nothing new under the sun. There's there's a lot of instances that we we go through, and they are pretty relative. They're 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 not really unique to their generation or, or their era. It's stuff that'll pass down. It's why you read the Bible and people say it's an ancient book. It's still relevant because humans really aren't that different. Like back then, yeah, we was we wasn't on wi-fi or on our google phones and stuff but we still learned to talk we still wanted to see about how to pay a debt or or um how to find love and stuff like that um and so um some of this stuff just isn't new now one thing i do want to tell people as especially as a christian involving the bible um you will not know how to do your taxes on the bible from the bible there's very a lot of helpful money advice in the Bible. There's a lot of helpful relationship advice in the Bible, but there's a whole lot of great and a whole lot of specificity. Specificity. I don't know if I'm saying it right. Um, that isn't 
clearly stated in the Bible. And I'm just gonna, maybe I'll get flack for that, but I don't really care. It's just, let's just be honest about that. There's not a lot of super duper, super duper, minute, microscopic clarity in the Bible sometimes. Sometimes it's implied. That's my excuse for it. It's a whole lot of implied knowledge that they don't mention, you know? So for instance, um, in terms of like Jewish people living in uh, like in the, the gospels, he didn't have to tell them to like establish your boundaries. If you're too nice, maybe you should say no sometimes. Probably because in the Jewish community, it was already implied in something taught. Yeah. Somebody, uh, and also like, for instance, like, uh, don't share, don't co-pay or something like that. That's establishing a boundary. Yeah. Probably shouldn't uh, go in with this dude who isn't really good with their money. Uh, that's establishing the boundary for yourself and for the per other person. Because eventually the other person is going to have to learn, dang, why people aren't helping me? Well, it's because you're showing yourself out. So eventually with humility, people learn. But um, I think I just want to say all of those things because I think clarity needs to be made, needs to be done. I get I get very tired and exhausted sometimes whenever I hear our sensationalist pre preachers talk about very vague topics and there's always a there's always a purpose for it. There's always some good purpose when people speak about lofty God based topics and, and very spiritual topics. There's there's there is a benefit to it. But sometimes I feel like we miss out on those specific uh, uh, problem solving solutions. You know, there's just some things you just need to be very, very not just candid about like you do need to be candid. You need to be honest. You need to be truthful. But you need to talk about when people have issues that's like, yo, I don't know how to deal with this or or. My my wife did this. My husband did this. How do I solve it? And one of the ways that helped me is to understand the heart of God. I, and I always I, I, I call it the heart of God because with God's heart, when he cares about people and he uses wisdom, he figures out what's best for the person at that time. And also, like it says in Proverbs, like bind wisdom to your neck. It means search for smart solutions and smart answers and, and be around smart people who know some stuff. Because at least then you'll know some stuff, you know, you'll, you, you can also figure out how they think. And when they can think about certain things in a certain way, it encourages you to think about things in a similar way. Um, I, one more thing. I'm sorry. I am doing a ramble right now because I'm just rifling off things that are on my mind. If you're not as masculine, and this is my problem. If you're not as masculine as you want to be, um, there are plenty of things you can do to help you survive as a a, I don't want to say feminine men, but a person who's less masculine and not as commonly or traditionally masculine. And it is not as masculine as it appears. Understand that it's okay. It's it's fine. It's okay. Another thing I want to say is you have to defend yourself in this world. You have to learn how to defend yourself. You have to learn to say no. You need to learn to say boundaries. Uh, you need to learn how to project your voice because some of us who are very nice people, we're soft-spoken. So learn how to <clears throat> learn how to be um, use your voice, learn how to project from your diaphragm, learn how to speak and hold eye contact. Sometimes if you hold eye contact too long, it might be seen as a threat, just like in the animal kingdom. So learn to blink. Um, another thing is to be firm in your decisions. Uh, think, be honest, tell the truth, because if you tell the truth, you won't, you will always have something to say. And this is also in conversations. Another thing in conversations, be patient. Because sometimes people want something to say. People want a listening ear. They love, sorry, my hair is all not the best and, you know, whatever. But um, people like to listen. I mean, uh, people like it when people listen. Sorry about that. People like it when people listen. So when people feel like they can trust you and they feel safe around you, it's good for you to uh, show that and use that to your advantage. Because if you don't, aren't a good listener, I mean, I'm sorry, if you're not a good speech, uh, person with speech or talk, um, you should find a good way to incorporate questions and responses and replies to people's opinions. When you're able to do that, you can keep a co good conversation going because you're not necessarily doing all the work, as they want to say, because people will speak and they, when they trust you, they feel more comfortable around you. And when they're more comfortable around you, they'll speak a lot more. So when you ask questions, you show curiosity you gain more of their trust. Um, I've had many instances where I've, and again, I like the aspects of Christianity where you reach people at their level. Uh, it's a definitely a good evangelism tactic, but at the same time, it's not just meant for evangelism. It's just meant to connect to people on the human level. Um, 
So when you are able to talk to people and you just like a therapist, therapists, um, they come at you with non non judgment and acceptance. And they come to you at your level and they try not to make you feel small. They try not to make you feel uh, uh, they try not to condescend to you. They try to hear you and, and view your opinion objectively, but also show you a better way that could help you in the longer run and tell you that I get maybe this is what you believe and, and that's fine, you know, and try to be understanding. Um, because it's not just because I think people too many, too often people do this thing where they apply morality where it's unnecessary at the moment. And if people just try to shame you and judge you, that makes people clam up and not trust you as much. So, in terms of conversations, um, try to be as the least judgmental as you can be. Try to be understanding, but also try to give a helpful alternative. And if they don't want to listen, then that's definitely their opinion. That's their prerogative. They're free to make their decisions. And even if you have a so-called better solution, I put that in quotes because it might be better. It may not be better. It really depends. Um, but. You have to let people if they if you know something better and they they're clearly headstrong about their opinions and their choices. You have to let them fall. It's it's not something I would be happy with doing, but sometimes you do have to let people make their decisions and end up with the consequences. And sometimes you might have to say, "I told you so." Sometimes you have to just be there and just say, "I'm it. It happened. It's okay. It's time for us to move forward. It's what more can what can you do now?" And it's okay if somebody feel bad, feel sad. Don't make people feel bad because they fell and you knew they were going to fall. Just help them understand that, okay, this happened. Now we can try a different option. Um, Sorry. <clears throat> it made me think about Ted Grundy because he has this like very calm demeanor. And he'll tell people very straight. I have to tell you this, this, that, and the third. But yeah, I guess that's all I have to say. Um, at least that's on my mind at the moment. I just want to just give wisdom to people and hopefully it helps um, and I'll probably see if I can just shed any more light on my opinions about dating. Um, and I guess that's it. All right.